Hi guys, Miss Mame here with today's story, Curious George Takes a Job. We're talking all about different kinds of jobs this week in honor of Labor Day. Lots of people work in this country, do all kinds of different jobs that make our community run. So let's see, this book has a lot of different jobs. Help me count them as we go through. If you're interested in taking the quiz, the quiz number is 40191. It's on the board right behind me. It's a 3.6 reading level. Curious George takes a job. This is George. He lives in the zoo. He was a good little monkey and always very curious. He wanted to find out what was going on outside the zoo. One day, when the zookeeper was not paying attention, George got a hold of his key to the cage. Uh-oh, so there's a job, a zookeeper. When the keeper discovered what had happened, it was too late. George was gone. Where was George? They looked for him everywhere, but they could not find him. Searching everywhere. Have you seen him? No. Have you seen him? George! He's this guy scratching his head. Where could he be? George was hiding in the hay of his friend, the elephant. Finally, the keeper gave up looking for him. George found a nice cozy spot to sleep under the elephant's right ear. And the next morning, before the, zoo keep, before the zoo opened, he got away safely. Do you see him tucked up in here sleeping with his little buddy, the elephant? Once, once in the street, George felt a little scared. What should he do in the big city? Maybe he could find his friend, the man with the yellow hat, who had brought him over from Africa a long time ago. Only George did not know where he lived. There was a bus, a bus stopping at the corner. George had never ridden on one. Quickly, he climbed a lamppost and jumped on top of the bus, and off they went. I guess maybe that could be another job that somebody has to drive the bus, a bus driver. They help our community run, don't they? Now they were right in the center of the town. There was so much to see that George did not wear to look first. If only he could go on riding like this forever. See him up there on top of the bus and all the busy streets and cars and people. But after a, after a while, George got tired and a little dizzy. When the bus slowed down to turn into a side street, George jumped off. There was a restaurant right in front of him. Hmm, something smelled good. Suddenly, George felt a little hungry. The kitchen door stood open and George walked in. On the table was a big pot. Of course, George was curious. He had to find out what was in it. What do you think is going to be in it? When the cook came back, he had a very big surprise. Uh-oh, job number three, a cook. Spaghetti was all over the place, and, the, and in the middle of it was a little monkey. George had been eating yards and yards and had wound himself up in it. The cook was a kind man and did not scold much, 
but George had to clean up the kitchen and then do all the dishes. My, what a lot of them there were. The cook was watching George. You are lucky to have four hands, he said. You can do things twice as quickly. Scrub, scrub, scrub. That could be another job, a dishwasher. I have a friend who could use a handy little fellow like you to wash windows. Uh-oh, another job, a window washer. If you would like to, I will take you over to him. So they went down to the subway and took an uptown train to the cook's friend, who was, another job, an elevator man in a skyscraper. That would be kind of a fun job. There's the elevator man. Sure, I could use you, the elevator man said to George. I will give you what you need for the job. You can start right away. But remember, you are here to wash windows. Never mind what people inside the house are doing. Don't be curious or you will get in trouble. George promised to be good, but little monkeys sometimes forget, especially when their name is Curious George. George was ready to start. My, how many windows there were! But George got ahead quickly since he worked with all four hands. He jumped from window to window just as he had once jumped from tree to tree in the African jungle. For a while, George stuck to his word, and he did not pay any attention to the people inside. Of course, he was curious, but he remembered his promise. Whew, that's a lot of windows to clean. In the room... In one room, a little boy was crying because he did not want to eat his spinach. George did not look, but went right on with his work. In another room, a man was taking a nap and snoring. George was sorry it was not his friend, the man with the yellow hat. He listened to the funny noise for a while, and then he went on working. But what was going on in here? George stopped working and pressed his nose against the window. Two painters were working inside. George was fascinating. Painting looked like a lot more fun than washing windows. Another job. Painters. How many is that? The painters were getting ready to go out for lunch. The minute they left, George climbed inside. Uh-oh, I smell trouble. What wonderful paints and brushes they had. George could not resist. An hour later, the painters came back. They opened the door and stood there with their mouths wide open. The whole room had changed into a jungle with palm trees all over the walls and a giraffe and two leopards and a zebra and a little monkey was busy painting himself on one of the trees. Then the painters knew what had happened. It's actually kind of a cool room. That would be kind of a cool room. You can come paint my room like that. Luckily, George was close to a door. He ran as fast as he could. After him ran the two painters, and then the elevator man, and then the woman who lived in the place. Oh, my lovely room, my lovely room, cried the woman. Don't let him get away! George headed for the fire escape. Look at them all, zooming down. Zoom, 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 zoom. There's a lot of them. Run, monkey, run! George reached the end of the fire escape. 
The others had not caught up with him yet. Here was his chance. They could not jump, but George could easily jump down and escape. In a moment, he would be safe. Poor little George. He had forgotten that the pavement was, was hard as stone, not like the soft grass in the jungle. Too bad. The fall broke his leg and an ambulance came to take George to the hospital. Another job, ambulance driver. He got what he deserves, said the woman, making my apartment into a jungle indeed. I told him he would get into trouble, the elevator man added. He is just too curious. George had to lie in bed with his leg high up in the plaster cast. He was very unhappy. And it had all started out so nicely. If only he had not been so curious, he could have had a lot of fun. Now it was too late. There's another job. A doctor. But the next morning, George's friend, the man with the big yellow hat, was buying his newspaper. Suddenly, he got very excited. This is George, he shouted when he saw the picture on the front page. That's another job, newspaper. Quickly, he read the whole story, and then he ran to the telephone booth to ring the hospital. I am George's friend, he said to the nurse who answered the telephone. Please take good care of him so that he will get better quickly. I want to take him to a movie studio and make a picture about his life in the jungle. Don't let him get into any more mischief until I can take him away. And a nurse is the, ne uh, the next job, another job. How many are we up to? Are you guys keeping count? Finally, the day came when George could walk again. Your friend is going to take you away this morning, said the nurse. Just wait right here for him and don't touch anything. As soon as George was almost, as soon as George was alone, he looked around at all the strange hospital things. I wonder what's in this big blue bottle, he thought. Oh, poor George just can't help himself. George was very curious. It smelled funny. Suddenly his head began to turn. Then he felt as if he were flying. Then rings and stars danced above his eyes. And then everything blacked out. And this is how the man with the yellow hat found George when he came to call for him. They picked him up and shook him, but he could not wake him up. He was so fast asleep that they finally had to put him under the shower. How surprised he was when he woke up. Look at his face. He's like, huh? What? What's going on? What happened? George said goodbye to the nurse and the kind doctor. And then he and the man with the yellow hat got into the car to drive to the movie studio. Another job, movie studio, all the cameramen. In the president's office, George had to sign a contract now that he was a movie actor. In the studio, George was kept so busy all the time that he forgot to be curious. He liked the jungle that they had made for him and played happily there. Lights, camera, action. And when the picture was finally finished, George invited all of his friends to see it. 
the doctor and the nurse and the ambulance driver and the man from the newsstand and the woman and the elevator man and the two painters and the cook and the reporter and all of the keepers at the zoo. Now the lights went out and the picture started. This is George, the voice began. He lived in the jungle. He was a good little monkey. He had only one fault. He was too curious. The end. Hope you enjoyed that story. Lots and lots of jobs in there to talk about. You guys have a great afternoon. I'll see you later. Bye.